Hello, my name is Monica Clark, and I am the Interactive Marketing Coordinator with the Wakeman Agency, and I am here to bring you the second installment of Social Media ROI. This time we're going to be looking at reasoning and what social media can do for you. So, as far as social media goes, there are many places that social media is applicable, and those are nonprofit, for-profit, and of course the personal expertise. So that would be, um, you know, the celebrity type or the someone who's writing a book or um, somebody who's an expert in their field. Um, perhaps they have a blog or a website. Now looking at reasoning, we also want to look at a basic marketing plan and how social media will fit into that basic marketing plan. So we're going to see the basics of it which include strategy, the strategy that you're going to be looking at as far as what you want to get across, who you want to reach, um, and setting those goals as far as um, how much you want to bring in, say, if you are a nonprofit, you want to bring in a certain amount of donations or new volunteers, or if you are a for-profit and you want to sell a certain number of units. Um, and of course, having a marketing plan as an expert as well is very important as far as setting goals and um, knowing exactly who your audience is there. Um, which comes into targeting a demographic, knowing exactly who you're going to be speaking to, understanding who your audience is. Um, those are all a part of the basics of marketing plans. So that, of course, encompasses a whole variety of things um, from print, from audio video, from um, actual you know, events, different um, interactions with the public, um, that sort of thing. And then, of course, implementation. Implementation is exactly how you are going to set out and execute your um, strategies to achieve the goals that are reaching your demographic. So, um, you know, as, as a whole, marketing plans are not that difficult to understand. But when you have to think about where social media fits into the mix, it can get a little bit um, into the gray area especially when it comes to, you know, budgeting. Um, you know, what are we going to spend on print ads versus what we're going to be spending on social media? And now with the dawn of this um, heavily technology-oriented society, what is the most important? So social media is definitely a part of the equation, and um, it's a part of the equation in more ways than one as we have seen so far. So let me get into how it actually fits into those. So let's consider the nonprofits. We're going to visit that over again. Now when you're a part of a nonprofit, there are certain things that you're going to be wanting to do with the social media, and some of those, of course, would be to communicate the cause and effect. Um, Perhaps you have a animal um, awareness organization and you want to let people know how important it is to get your pet spayed or neutered, for instance. Um, you would, of course, share the problem and the solution, how your nonprofit helps with the solution, or perhaps it's a different type of nonprofit uh, you know, a nonprofit for um, finding a cure for cancer. Um, something like that, then you would also show exactly how cancer is affecting people. Um, and since there is no cause, you look at something a little bit different. So you're going to see exactly what the community is understanding about cancer, you know, how it's affecting, who it is affecting, how they can um, get better treated, um, find it faster, that sort of thing. So you're going to be using social media to also build the awareness of your nonprofit's cause. What's also great about social media and what was seen um, with the people of Egypt in recent time is the actual organization that can happen. Um, organizing people from across the globe to make changes um, to, for instance, with uh, Occupy Wall Street, you can see a lot of people are uh, tweeting about it, letting people know well, we're going to be here, we're going to be there. Same thing um, when Egypt's uprise occurred, 
it, a lot of it was organized via social media venues. Social media allows for individuals to communicate in a completely different way. And um, it's a very open platform. It's a very expressive platform. So it's, it's a really great way to, you know, talk with somebody from across the country or across the world. You can also provide um, a new way to attract donors and volunteers. So in social media, not only are you interacting with somebody um, in a more direct format, but you're also going to be doing it in a completely different way um, that hits their psyche a little bit differently. So you're going to be able to attract a donor or a volunteer in such ways as um, setting up mobile charity programs that you're able to text in donations, um, letting them know about events, um, you know, gathering volunteers and um, having them actually volunteer directly from your site with a hashtag um, on Twitter or creating a group on Facebook and having them directly um, join the volunteer or the, um, you know, communication network. I know of one organization that does a really great um, benefit for animals finding homes and they connect by actually having someone in each area drive a specific amount of miles in between the um, home or the new placement of the um, orphaned animal so that it can find a place to live. And it's a, a really cool, different way to approach things. And that's all done via social media. Now, looking at for-profit organizations, it's a little bit different, but uh, very similar. A lot of um, things overlap as far as, you know, attracting people, um, showing why your product is um, important or can um, be different or should be something that the individual would want to attain or purchase. But it's also going to be an informational outlet. It's going to... Um, allow you to speak to your audience and really inform them of everything that you have to offer as a um, for-profit. So you have, if you have, say, a um, new product that is a handbag that organizes a bunch of different things, you're going to be able to share all of these different ideas, not only with people who are interested in handbags, but also people who perhaps are um, in the fabric industry, um, people who are across the board um, in the fashion industry. So you're really able to broaden those horizons. It's also going to allow you as a for-profit to create an identity. Oftentimes, for-profits can grow so quickly or they're so small that the identity either gets lost in the mix of being too large or doesn't even get seen. So creating the identity is very important for the profit, um, for for-profit, as well as a non-profit, but creating the identity for a for-profit um, really brings a humanity edge to it and allows you to interact with people in a um, more direct way versus, say, somebody calling an 800 number to share their... Um, either praises or concerns, you can actually deal with it on a social media public forum where everybody can see you. So it's extremely transparent, which is something that, you know, oftentimes you really want to go for, especially with dealing um, with the public. And a lot of for-profits are also using Twitter or Facebook as a customer service um, outlet where you can actually, you know, ask a question or um, express a concern and it gets immediately um, immediate attention by the for-profit and it is either corrected or um, addressed in such a way that oftentimes it not only benefits that one person's concerns, but it benefits everyone who saw you as a for-profit respond to their concerns in such a um, productive, speedy pleasant manner. So it amplifies those best customer experiences um, tenfold. And then it, again, the social media is going to align all of your marketing efforts. So if you have um, pamphlets, if you have events, if you have um, commercials, you can always put on there, follow us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, engage in the new conversation, etc., etc. It's going to bring everything together. It's going to be a nice 
it's going to be like glue. It's going to be like the, the frosting between two layers of cake that just keeps everything molded together and on the right path. And um, what's re it's just perfect for this because it is all about communication. Then comes the big question on, well, if we're going to decide to do a social media campaign or even implement this into our regular marketing plan, who in the world's going to manage it? Well, you could pick an intern um, or you could create a position in your actual office or you could um, add it on to somebody's activities. But doing all of that in-house is going to, of course, cost money. So that's where um, the budgeting part of this probably takes the most um, effort and the most um, division because when you're looking at social media as a whole, it, it's a free platform in all essence, but actually doing it it's, is a human effort. Um, it's not just a bunch of robots behind the screen creating the content, it's real people. So you want to make sure that if you choose somebody that it's not going to overload them if they already have a position in your um, business. And if it is somebody absolutely new that they are um, going to actually be in line with what your um, goals are. So um, another great way to do this is um, getting a contracted specialist. You could hire either an agency or a firm or an individual freelancer. Um, there are many different opportunities to hire a contracted specialist and they can handle and run your social media. Um, oftentimes you can get your social media um, off the ground this way. It's a wonderful way to get things running, especially if you don't completely understand how um, social media works and you don't want to drown in the sea of, of uh, Twitter handles. There's a lot of people out there. Um, also, it's, it's cost effective to do it this way very often. Um, you can also bring this contracted specialist up to date with your goals so that you are on the same level and since they will be specialized in your product and your nonprofit or cause or organization, et cetera, et cetera, they're going to be also um, specializing not just in social media, but specializing in you. Another way that some companies do it is that they will manage their social media in-house, but when something occurs such as an initiative or a new promotion, a new product or an event, um, that you're going to want to beef up your social media or beef up the awareness. This is where that comes into play. So um, this is a great idea to get an event firm that has the ability to support you with social media so that you are not only reaching your current audience and letting them know perhaps that you're having a uh, gala, for instance, um, but that you're also reaching people that may have never heard of you before and are interested in what you're doing and are able to see all of the information and communication that you've been having with your online social media efforts. And now they want to go ahead and buy a ticket to your event. It's, it's amazing how it works, but um, it's something that is definitely important to consider when you're putting so much time, effort, and money into um, an initiative such as like I said, a gala or a promotion or launching a new product. So once you've reasoned your objectives, what you're going to want to do to um, fit it into the social media formula is collect all the data and plug it into the formula. Once you've done that, you're able to move more progressively. Now, once you're moving more progressively, and what that means is really you're able to correct any issues that you've had. Um, you're able to, you know, just kind of tweak here and there what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong. So measuring these effects on your sales, your interactions, your approval ratings, your donations, etc., whatever you choose to measure, it will allow you to tweak it within your marketing plan according to what is or what it's not producing. And then the formula can often then allow you to measure an entire marketing plan much sooner than you would be able to by using traditional marketing methods. Now, you're probably wondering how that works. Well, when you're in social media, you're in the here and now. You're able to get instant communication. You're able to get instant numbers. You're able to get what is happening, what is trending, 
what is going on without having to wait to see, um, you know, how many tickets were sold or what was what was do- done here or what was done there. You can actually get a little bit of a feel of what the outcome of your entire marketing plan will look like um, using social media. So not only are you l- working with a tool that's going to be very communicative and um, identity building and engaging, but you're also working with something that can be plugged into a formula and show you your return on investment or even predict your return on investment um, depending on the time that you um, put into it and the the amount and different types of data that you decide to collect from it. So we've talked about a lot here and between series part one and today's part two. If you have any questions whatsoever, please feel free to tweet us directly and at mention us at at Wakeman Agency, or you can always follow us at facebook.com at the Wakeman Agency. So um, we'd love to hear from you. Please as feel free to at any time if you have any questions. Um, we will be able to answer them as soon as possible. It was a Great spending time with you today. I'm really glad that I was able to share all this information and I look forward to our next video blog.